Welcome, homesteaders. Today we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts to putting up an electrical fence, the pros, the cons. Uh, I'm going to show you what mine looks like and why I put it up and talk to you about some of the products that were used that made it a little easier for me. So we're going to go out to one of my kennel areas. All right. As I said, it's a hot East Texas day. That sun is beating down. So, we raise many Aussies out here at Colony Hills Homestead, as well as quail, rabbit. So, we have them located in various places to include the house. I'm gonna give Pepper a treat so that I can do this video. Here you go, baby. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. All right, we're going to start over here to walk in gate. Okay, as you can see, I used the polystrand wiring. I'll tell you why shortly. So, on the wooden post, I used a two inch connector and on the t-post I used a five inch connector which basically allows me to run a line evenly down through here so you can see how these connectors work there's an over and under section of wire runs through as you can see I keep the the line clear of weeds, grass, and debris that does need to be watched as it will ground your wiring out and reduce the charge and even eliminate the charge if there's too much debris on your line. So walking these lines or looking at these lines is very important. Drive through gate here to this one, another section over there doesn't have electrical fencing yet and here are the connectors that I use where I can reach down with the wiring still hot that yellow piece is rubber disconnect it hang it up there on that fence and drive in I'm gonna walk right outside here and we're gonna talk about charger I'm using the charger I chose is made by American Farm Works this particular charger can handle five miles as you can see it's got 0 0.10 output joules 0.13 store joules The red knob is for the hot that goes to your fencing. Green knob goes to your ground. We'll talk about that in just a moment. It's also a very good idea to occasionally take a damp cloth and wipe your solar panel off to make sure it's clean on an off switch. This is that simple. Comes with a mounting bracket that you can mount directly onto a T-post. As you can see where it goes down and connects to my fence, I have rubber tubing. You do not want your wiring to touch anything but that electrical fence. That rubber tub tubing keeps it from grounding out against the fence. As I have it here as well. Okay, so let's talk about the ground system. This is very important. A lot of people try to get by using one grounding, one grounding rod, and they'll either use copper or galvanized. I've chosen galvanized. I went to a big, big box store. I can't talk today. I hadn't had enough caffeine, I feel. And one six-foot steak was running about $28. On Amazon, I found three six-foot sections of galvanized ground rod 
and the wire that you see, the heavy gauge wire to run it and to include the connectors on each wire for about $30, $31, free shipping. Pretty good deal, right? So the reason I use three, and this, this system actually recommends three, and most of them do. If you're in a dry climate, you want to ensure that that rod is down into some damp soil. If it's too dry, you need to get an eight foot line, an eight foot ground rod versus six foot. But out of these three that I have here, I have always had good ground. By using those three, I feel like I have uh, really got this fence performing the way I want it to perform. Now, as far as the fence itself, my Aussies are smart. They touched it one time. It was put up so that they would, wouldn't dig under. They touched it one time and they've never touched it again. Not that it hurt them that bad, but just don't like the shock and they learn. So in all honesty, I probably could reach over here and just turn this system off, but it's not costing me one penny to leave it running as it is, it is solar. You'll see here, red light blinking, lets you know that it is on. Now, I'm pretty big old boy. If I wanted to test this wire, I believe I could probably just reach down here and, and grab this wire. Like, oh, my good Lord. Woo, woo. Wee. No, I'm just joking, guys. Don't do that. There is a very cheap answer for that. You can get a voltage meter. You push the ground from the voltage meter into the dirt and touch it and it will tell you how many volts or how many joules you're putting off, whether that wire is hot or not. You can buy them just to simply tell you whether it's live or not. Um, but I know that this is working. Keep it free of debris, limbs, grass, weeds. Keep your solar panel clean. Get your ground rods drove down deep and you'll have no issues with your, with your fencing. None whatsoever have I had. All right, guys, there's a, a product I'm gonna show you that you can use to tighten these, this wire if it becomes loose. But what I like about the poly strand is you can roll that up, you can move it to another place and use it. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. So thank you for watching. Let's go to the conclusion. So I wanted to tell you, I want to show you one or two other little things here. So for your poly wire, they make a poly wire tightener. Um, so if you ever see that your fence is loose or sagging, uh, they make these little things here that you can wrap your wire around and give it a twist and connect it onto your wiring and it just tightens that wire right up. You can do this without even touching your wire. You don't have to break, break electricity in the system, okay? These are pretty neat. Found these on Amazon. I thought they might be helpful. Um, I also wanted to explain one other reason why I like this poly wire. Not only is it strong and very effective, but I can reuse it very easily. Can, you know, it's a big difference between rolling up some aluminum or steel bare, bare steel wire all crinkling up and and you can wrap this stuff up, take off, use it somewhere else, use it over and over again. Um, you have to splice it together, you just tie it. You have to tie a connection, you just tie, just like you would a regular knot, and, and it's gonna hold, it'll be there. Um, they make a roller, you can actually roll this stuff up, which if you had large fenced areas, you would certainly wanna buy you one of those, but I don't, I have several small fenced areas. Um, but anyway, 
I hope this video helps you out. I wish you a very beautiful and blessed day. We'd like you to subscribe, like, share this video, and we'll keep bringing you more content. Thank you.